was the year 1662. In that time, many believed in witches and warlocks, goblins and sorcerers, such as had never before been seen, and with the grace of God, never will be seen again. It was in this year that the devil had come upon the earth to tempt a holy friar named Friar Gonsol. Gonsol was a very good man and a very holy man, albeit young in his practice. The devil's plan was to lure this righteous man unto the path of evil. Okay, now what else can I do? I've given to the poor, I've helped the sick, I've aided the needy, I've fasted, I've prayed, I've read to the blind. Oh, I know, I have extra clothes. I have this one habit, I don't need anything else. This is enough to cover my body and keep me warm, warm enough anyway. Damn that goody two-shoes. I can't stand that he does this and that. So good. He makes me sick. I know how to tempt him and lure him from his good deeds. No common temptation will do. This will require finesse. Now, what might be dazzling this holy man of God? There, this is a fine collection. This will keep people warm. And I put some food in there, some bread, and it will keep them filled with keep their stomachs filled as well. How can I help him to achieve his miserable end? I know, the friar likes to read. I will give him a book, a book like no other. And the devil began to compile a book of many curious things to both please and ensnare him and to lure him away from his good deeds. I know that temptations of the flesh would be worthless in leading this friar down the path of evil. I think this, this will do it. Now presently came this thing of evil unto Friar Gonsol, disguised as another friar. As he approached, the new friar made a proper and very low bow of greeting. Well, this man appears to be holy, but there's a hardness in his eyes, and he smells of sulfur and brimstone beneath his tattered cloak and hood which I associate with the devil, not a friar. My good friar, I hope that the odor coming from you that is in my nostrils is an egg gone bad and not the fumes coming from a bottomless pit. Nay, sweet friar, what you are smelling are the gifts of frankincense and myrrh that I bring to you. For I am of holy orders, and I have brought thee a wondrous and honorable book, both beautiful to look upon and filled 
with holy knowledge. The eyes of Friar Gonsol lit up with bright sparkles and his heart leapt with joy. More than his love of God and the spiritual welfare, this friar loved books. And here appeared one that was exceedingly special. Oh, please, I beg of you, lend me this book that I may know the name on it and discover the wonders of its counsel. Here, you can have a look. See that the cover is very old and worn. This book has seen many generations and helped countless other friars throughout history. This is a unique book of immeasurable value, clearly filled with knowledge. This book contains pictures, symbols, and texts describing wondrous acts of those similar to yourself. This book could be looked upon as a guidebook of how to get into heaven. Even the fine paper upon which it is printed is heavenly. And lo, look, appearing on its pages are written the names of they that have possessed it in the past. Many famous people, priests, friars, and kings. Oh my, here's a dedication that shows this book was presented by Divinus de Medici at, to Apollo at Rhodes. When Friar Gonsal saw the book, how it was titled and imprinted and adorned and bound, he knew it to be of vast worth and the desire to possess it overcame all other thoughts. He asked of Friar Asmodeus how to do so. Surely by now thou knowest that Friar Asmodeus is the devil, in case you were still wondering. Please, dear brother Asmodeus, might I please borrow this book for a short time? Even a week would be an extravagant privilege. My dear Friar Gonzo, this book shall be yours without a price. I only ask that you promise to do me a small favor, as I shall specify at some point future. With such a demand, I know that this odiferous friar is none but the devil, but I sorely want that book. I will hear what he has to say. Speak on, my good man. I have to leave right now, but I will give thought to your task. Please come to me at the Red Oak Meadow tonight, and we will talk together. Dare I ask him? Yes. Dearest Lord, I ask thee for guidance. I would like that book only to serve you better so that I might comprehend your word. Yes, I will have that book. I am smarter than the devil.
As the day went on, Friar Gonsol became more and more doubtful and visited Friar Francis, another holy man, one whom by continual fastings and devotions had made himself an example of piety unto all men. And to this holy brother did Friar Gonsol tell the entire story of his temptation and told fully of the virtuous, wonderful book and of its treasury pages. The devil is very clever. He has surely set this trap for your feet. Have a care, my brother, that you do not fall into the pit which he has created for you. It is a good thing that you have come to me. Otherwise, a great misfortune might have fallen upon you. Brother Francis, you are a gift from God to make yourself available to me at a moment's notice. And at this, my very moment of crisis. Now listen to my words carefully. Have no more to do with this friar Asmodeus. Send him to me, or better yet, set up a meeting on another day and I will go in your place. Nay, nay. This evil temptation has been provided for me for a special test. People will think me a weak and cowardly man were I to sin thee in my stead, to bear the tasks and temptations that have been designed for the testing of my virtue. Dear Gonzo, your thoughts are true, but you are a younger brother than I, and firm though your resolution may be now, you are more likely than I to be tricked and be dazzled by his diabolical words and promises. So let me know where you are meeting this devil with the book. I burn to meet him and to steal this treasure from his blasphemous grasp. Nay, nay, I am strong, and, and while having a moment's weakness, I must prove my mettle, that I am a worthy man of God. Ah, oh, I see that you have little faith in my strength to combat the fiend. Your trust in me should be greater, for I have done you many a kindly office. You know, I am thinking that you have been seduced by the book. Unhappy brother, can it be that you are vain enough to desire this frivolous bauble, that you would seek the devil's companionship and work with him to obtain this trophy? I charge thee, brother Bonso, open your eyes and see the slippery slope on which you are standing. Brother, thy words are sound, but my mind is torn. What shall I do? What? What shall I do? Come now, hesitate no longer. Tell me where that devil may be found. I want to see this wonderful book. Not that I care for the book, certainly not. Just that I am very anxious to bring this evil devil to justice. Merciful heavens. I think that your desire for this book has encouraged you to go more than a holy battle with the devil. I am offended. You speak wrongly. You are mistaking pious zeal for sinful selfishness. I want to see how this devil walks to and fro using a sweet and precious book for the temptation of holy men. How can a holy book be used as an instrument by the prince of darkness for such dastardly deeds? You are wise, but your words only convince me more that I must do battle with the devil for that book. Me. So now I shall go to encounter the fiend myself. Then by the saints, I shall go with thee. Tarry will I gather my belongings. Nay, nay, I will go. Alas, he is gone. I will indeed help them get this book.
I shall now go beat with this friar Asmodeus. I'm not as energetic. My legs are not as long, and my younger counterpart is surely a faster runner. But I will find him. Fortunately, it is not a difficult thing to follow a friar through the village. Now let it be known that Friar Francis did follow close upon his heels, for though his legs were not so long, he was smart and observant. He followed Friar Gonsol with little task. I will meet with this Friar Asmodeus who does not know that I know his true identity. I will get that book and he will be left with nothing, nothing but humiliation. A book of special assistance is not for a younger man. Only I have the experience to take advantage of the wisdom contained within. How dare he to take this opportunity from me? I will go around the other way and to cut him off. As it turned out, the devil was already in the clearing where he had set the appointment. And in his hand, he had the book. He was surprised when he observed the two friars coming at him, one from the east and one from the west. I warn thee, devil, I give you but one chance to give me that book. Otherwise, I will take you by the horns and hoofs and rub your ribs together. That book shall be mine. No, don't listen to him, devil, for I am coming to wrestle with thee, and I alone shall have it. Stand your ground. With such advances, the entire church may be on their way. No way can I defeat them all. I'll stay no longer for their coming. I shall take my book and go. Now many people at that time saw the devil fleeing from the two friars so that esteeming it to be a sign of special grace, these people did ever thereafter acknowledge the friars to be saints. And unto this day, you shall hear of St. Gonsol and St. Francis. Unto this day too, doth the devil, with that same book with which he tempted the friars, he set and ensnare men of every age and in all of places, against whom may heaven fortify us to do battle speedily and with successful issuance. I know, the friar likes to read. I will give him a book, a book like no other. <laughs> but a book, a book. 
that would be different. I'm finished. This will do it. <laughs> this will do it. Hey. <laughs> Here's your horns back, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> oh, this was fun. Look, I burn to meet him and to steal this treasure from his gas blasphemous me grass. Oh. Yeah, let's read that last sentence over. Oh, uh, I, I confused the dastardly <laughs> deeds with the blasphemous. <laughs> okay. Just that I'm very anxious to bring this evil devil to justice. Merciful heavens. I think that your desire for this book has encouraged you to go more. I'm sorry, could I do that one more time? Okay. Yeah. I've changed two words, so I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. That sounded good. So now I'm going to put you in the middle of a village. Okay, I, now i got to put myself up. Yes, now you want that up. My good friar, I hope the odor coming from you is My good friar, I hope the odor coming from you that is in my nostrils is Oh, beautiful. Oops, sorry. Continuity error. I'm outside. I have to have my hood up. Wait. We have to start clear to the beginning. Ugh. I feel like Darth Vader. <laughs> My good friar. Oh. <laughs> oh, wrong one. Okay. Players. In case you are still wondering. With such a demand. I know that this odiferous friar, I can't read my lines. I took my glasses off for effect. <laughs> Even the fine paper upon which it is printed is heavenly. And lo, appearing on its pages are written the names of they that have possessed it in the past. Many famous people, priests, friars, kings. Oh, holy sh and there's an autograph. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <sighs> and lo, appearing on its pages are written in the <laughs> I'll just start. Okay. And you don't need to read that part. <laughs> well, then, uh...